Detective LaRue, Letters from the Investigation, written and illustrated by Mark Teague. The Snort City Register, Gazette, September the 30th. Hibbins Cats Missing. Dog suspected in a possible case of feline foul play. Two Snort City cats were reported missing yesterday, and hours later, a neighborhood dog was captured by police. Although there was no sign of forced entry, the cats were apparently abducted from the 2nd Avenue apartment. I simply can't imagine them leaving on their own, said owner Leona Hibbins. My darlings wouldn't dream of upsetting me like that. Supporting Mrs. Hibbins' theory was the capture in Gruber Park of local dog Ike LaRue, whom police described as suspicious. LaRue was apprehended while attempting to bury, bury a bag of cat treats. Ike has always had it in for my cat, said Mrs. Hibbins, citing an altercation on the building's fire escape two winters ago. Police blotter, January 16th. I just want to know what he did to them this time. The dog's owner, Gertrude R. LaRue, is currently vacationing in Europe. Ike will be detained at police headquarters pending further investigation. October the 1st. Dear Mrs. LaRue, I hate to disrupt your vacation, but you must return immediately. An unfortunate misunderstanding, as well as very sloppy police work, has landed me in jail. The case involves the Hibbins cats, who have mysteriously disappeared. As usual, everyone blames the dog, without even considering whether the cats might be guilty of something. Needless to say, reports that I was attempting to steal their strangely yummy cat treats are entirely false. Come home now. Sincerely, Ike. P.S. This must seem sadly familiar. October 2nd. Dear Mrs. LaRue, the police continue to interrogate me about what happened to the Hibbins cats. I wish I knew. The last I saw of them, they were sunbathing in Gruber Park. I went to retrieve their cat treats, which they had foolishly left by the swings, and when I returned, they were gone. I know Mrs. Hibbins is upset, but I'm sure she'll get over it. Between you and me, they weren't very good cats. Sincerely, Ike. P.S. Imagine how I feel cooped up inside this lo loathsome dungeon. October the 3rd. Dear Mrs. LaRue, if you really want to know why I was in Gruber Park, the truth is that I was doing Mrs. Hibbins a favor. The cats had threatened to damage her apartment, as only cats can, unless I let them out for some fresh air. Reluctantly, I agreed. Now it appears they had more in mind than a simple walk in the park. My kindness was repaid with deception. I have learned my lesson. Regretfully yours, Ike. P.S. No, I do not think it was the be it was it would be best for me to remain with the nice police until you finish your vacation. October 4th. Dear Mrs. LaRue, I can't be begin to tell you how dire this situation has become. Mrs. Hibbins insists that I am responsible for losing her cats. Plus, she has managed to convince everybody that they were rare and valuable. Nobody stops to consider how unlikely that is. But nobody is nothing is being done to find them. Apparently, it is easier for some people to blame a dog than to solve a crime. In fact, the police claim to be working on another case entirely. It looks like I would have to take matters into my own paws and solve this mystery myself. Your intrepid dog, Ike. P.S. Besides, it has become shockingly apparent that you do not intend to come get me. October 5th, the Snort City Register Gazette. LaRue flees custody. Cat still missing. Just days after being captured, local dog Ike LaRue apparently escaped from police headquarters yesterday. He just sort of walked out, admitted Officer Lewis Sparky Waldorf. LaRue is considered a, a suspect in the earlier disappearance of two cats belonging to Leona Hibbins of 2nd Avenue. Waldorf acknowledges that the investigation into the case has, into the case has stalled. 
We've all been distracted by the canary burglaries. Until we can establish who has been stealing these birds, I'm afraid we won't be able to focus on the Hibbins cats. For more on the canaries, see page A1. As for LaRue, Waldorf speculated that the dog will return as soon as he gets hungry. Canary burglars strike again. Snort City Police report that two canaries and a Minaw bird were stolen from the Birdland Pet Store on Flopworth Street last night. The burglary closely resembles thefts from other stores this week and may mark the beginning of a major crime spree. Investigators admit to being completely baffled. We can't figure out who would commit such crimes, said Chief Detective Mavis Bickle. October 6th, South Snort City. Dear Mrs. LaRue, yes, I have escaped. Furthermore, my search for the Hibbins cats has taken me into an awful part of town. Here, cats roam the streets freely, day and night, howling, knocking over trash cans, and clawing people's ankles as they walk by. It's a terrible place, Mrs. LaRue, but by handing out a few cat treats, I've been able to turn up some very interesting facts. For instance, did you know that cats regularly capture and eat small animals? I had no idea. I will tell you more as the case begins to unfold. Sincerely, Ike. P.S. Imagine the dang danger and hardship. October 2nd, South Snore City. Dear Mrs. LaRue, today my investigation led me to a pigeon named Rocco who told me that half of his family was lost in attacks by, you guessed it, cats. It seems that even our lovely feathered friends are not safe from these little monsters. It's clear to me that I must find Mrs. Hibbins cats quickly for the good of the city. Yours truly, Ike. October 8th in Trundle Brook. Dear Mrs. LaRue, I followed a tip up here to the Trundle Brook, Brook Cattery. I wanted to find out if valuable cats behave any better than the little brutes I've been seeing downtown. Clearly they do not. In fact, I was told that the only way to keep small animals safe is to keep cats inside. Sincerely, Ike. October 9th, back in Snort City. Dear Mrs. LaRue, the news today is all about the latest canary burglary. Only this time, the criminals made off with two parrots and a gerbil as well. Have you noticed that this terrible crime wave began just after the Hibbins cats disappeared? It isn't a pleasant thought, but of course, a dog must follow his instincts. Yours, Ike. October 10th, from an undisclosed location. Dear Mrs. LaRue, welcome home. I wish I could be there to greet you properly, but as you know, I am on the lam. Until I can solve this case, I must remain in hiding. It is a situation rife with intrigue and danger. As I close in on the culprits, the police remain intent on catching me. Unfortunately, they have no idea who the real criminals are. As long as they continue to regard the cats as innocent victims, they'll be barking up the wrong tree. Perhaps I can think of some way to tip them off. Your sleuth, Ike. October 11th, Gruber Park, outside the small pet emporium. Dear Mrs. LaRue, just this morning I discovered that the very first canary burglary was here on the night of my arrest. Apparently the sneaky villains climbed the fire estate escape at the small pet emporium and made off with six plump birds. To think that I was the unwitting pawn in their wicked scheme? But I've heard that criminals always return to the scene of the crime, and if that's true, I have a feeling the Hibbins cats will be here shortly. I just called the police. Wait, I think I see them up on the fire escape. Gotta go, Ike. The Snort City Register, Gazette, October 12th. Cats rescued, LaRue saves the day. Respond, responding to an anonymous tip, Snort City Police rushed last night to the small pet emporium where they were able to assist hero dog Ike LaRue to his rescue of two lost cats. 
The cat's beloved pets of local resident Leona Hibbins has been missing for 12 days. Though clearly traumatized by their ordeal, they appeared healthy and very well fed. LaRue apparently found the cats clinging to a fire escape and was able to hold them until police arrived. To tell the truth, we had considered the dog a suspect, especially after he escaped, said Chief Detective Mavis Biggle. We see now that he was simply determined to save his little friends. He was searching for the cats all week, confirmed the dog's owner, Gertrude R. LaRue, who recently returned from France. I'm proud of my Ike. Even Mrs. Hibbins, who had been critical of LaRue prior to the rescue, was full of praise. I completely misjudged him, she admits. I never knew he had cared so much about my cats. October 12th, Police Headquarters. Dear Mrs. LaRue, Unfortunately, you can't believe everything you read in the newspaper. Though they portrayed my own heroism nicely, I'm afraid the police completely misjudged the situation. Instead of making an arrest, they made a rescue. Oh well, somehow humans are never able to see the truth about cats. For me, that's the real mystery. Any anyway, the police are a swell bunch. I have no more hard feelings about what happened. See you soon, Ike. October 20th, the Snort City Register. LaRue named honorary detective, dog praised in police ceremony. In a ceremony at City Hall yesterday, local dog Ike LaRue was presented with a detective's badge and was cheered wildly for his role in rescuing two cats earlier this month. What he did there was a first-rate police work, said Detective, said Chief Detective Mavis Bickle. I'm sure he'll be, I'm sure he'll be a credit to the force. The ceremony was made possible by an almost complete absence of crime over the last few days. Even the canary burglary, burglary seemed to have ended, said Bickle. We've had a lot of free time on our hands. Mayor Mitzi Sleeper agreed. Nothing else is happening, she said. It seemed like a good time for a ceremony. When asked what, what duties Ike LaRue might be expected to perform, Detective Bickle smiled. If he keeps an eye on those wonderful cats, she said, that'll be enough for us. Grateful cats embrace their hero. The end.